How's it going everyone, Michael here. So today I have a different kind of video for you. Today I'm gonna to talk about the Coinbase offer that I received and why I decided to reject it. So a couple months ago I interviewed at a couple large tech companies and I ended up getting multiple offers but why did I decide against Coinbase? So for those of you that are unfamiliar with the company, Coinbase is a company leading the effort in crypto. They operate a cryptocurrency exchange platform. Chances are if you're investing in crypto or know someone that is, they are likely using Coinbase. A big reason for applying was simply the impact that they have on the crypto market. It seemed like it would be a great company to work on some interesting challenges. So the offer that I received was 200 40,000 per year in total compensation. So the breakdown of that includes base salary, bonus, and RSUs per year. And this was for a mid-level backend engineering position, which aligns with my current background. Right now I work as a backend engineer. Now I realize for Silicon Valley total compensation, this may not seem like a crazy amount of money, especially the, the posts that you see on blind, but I actually live in Southern California and I don't live in a big city. So 240,000 per year is a pretty large offer at least for where I'm located. So why did I reject if the offer was so great? The first reason was the work-life balance is not great. So how could I possibly know that Coinbase has bad work-life balance without actually working there? So I drew this conclusion from two different things. The first was actually going on blind, and the second was a blog post that was released from Coinbase themselves. Once I got my offer, I started researching Coinbase culture on blind, and a ton of things popped up. So if you're unfamiliar with blind, it's an anonymous platform where people verified to be working at a specific company can post on these different kinds of forums. And many Coinbase employees, from what I saw, mentioned that they have to put in extensive hours and that it can be very stressful due to deadlines. I figured if many Coinbase employees were saying the same thing, that it was likely whatever team I did join I was likely gonna have the same experience. Now, in terms of the Coinbase blog post, several times in this article, they described working at Coinbase as intense, high intensity, balanced with what's called recharge time. And there's a specific quote in this article. It says, we don't promise 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. hours or 40 hour work weeks. Many days and weeks are long because that's what it takes to get the job done. So. To me, I interpret this as this is just an excuse. We want to, you know, work you to death. Um, at least that was what I got out of that. But, it, you know, at least it's cool to see that a company is upfront with what they expect. You know, many companies would not be upfront like this. Um, so I actually did appreciate that they actually put out a blog post saying this, but I still felt like it didn't really align with what I wanted in my next role. Also, the mention of recharge time kind of was a red flag for me. The employees on blind never mentioned anything of a recharge time. I think if this actually existed, this would have been something that was brought up and I didn't see anyone post about that. So. To me, the work-life balance just didn't seem to be great there. That was my first reason. The second reason and probably the biggest reason was I landed an offer from Google. This was one of my biggest reasons for rejecting the Coinbase offer. Plain and simple, I've always wanted to work at Google and now I actually had the opportunity. Back in college, hearing of how great it was to work at Google, I kind of made it a goal of mine that eventually I would work at Google one day and if you're curious about my Google experience, I have a video that you can check out at the end of this video or in the description. But in summary, the timing just never seemed to work out with Google. I've been in the industry for a little over four years and it wasn't till very recently that the stars kind of aligned. Recently, I was open to a new role and Google was allowing remote at this time and a Google recruiter just happened to reach out to me. So it just kind of worked out. Once I actually made it through the Google interview process and received an offer, I felt like I had kind of achieved a goal that had taken many years to complete because it did take years. And not to mention Google you know, it's large brand value, it has great work-life balance, it's interesting projects, you know, it just felt like the right opportunity at the perfect time. 
um, in comparison to what Coinbase was offering. One way that helped me decide to go with Google and not Coinbase was this. So you can do this exercise if you're ever trying to make a decision between two companies. This is what helped me. So you have a Venn diagram and on each circle you have work-life balance, money, and then prestige. And in my mind, Coinbase fell in the section for money and prestige because I had already verified that it was poor work-life balance. Google, on the other hand, I feel like it's kind of in the middle because they pay well, they're very well known, and they have great work-life balance. Once I actually thought about it this way, I knew my decision had to be Google. My third reason for rejecting Coinbase was the company was experiencing hypergrowth. So hypergrowth was a term that I kept hearing over and over again while going through the interview process. The recruiter mentioned that Coinbase was scaling very quickly. They were trying to hire many software engineers at a rapid pace in a very very short time frame in order to deliver on different product features. Um, it was even mentioned in, in this uh, Twitter post I saw that they're experiencing hyper growth. So I just kept seeing and hearing of this term. The reason why being part of a hyper growth company did not excite me was because I wanted to be part of a company that was already established and had processes in place. Because my first job out of college, I worked at a startup and I worked there for many, many years. And then I moved to a mid-sized company for a while. So I imagined that the next company I joined would be a lot more structured. I didn't want to join another unstructured company. And there's nothing wrong with being part of an unstructured company. I feel like, you know, you get a lot of uh, different responsibilities, which I definitely feel like I did. However, I feel like I had already experienced that and I wanted to join a more established company. In my mind, when you're growing really rapidly, it's likely things will not be structured and organized. So this was just another reason I decided to reject Coinbase. My fourth reason was that there was no office location nearby. So this was more of a minor reason, to be honest, as to why I decided against it. But I figured that if I ever did want to go into an office for whatever reason, you know, whether that be to meet up with coworkers for an important meeting or just have a place to focus and get out of my apartment, then at least I would have, have you know, a place to go to. But the issue is I'm in Southern California and there are no Coinbase offices near me. So I would never really get the chance to go into the office casually if I wanted to. The closest location to me is actually in San Francisco, which is obviously still very far. And at least with Google, there was an LA and Irvine location that were both in reasonable driving distance from where I am. My final reason is kind of an interesting one. So they told me that they were not willing to negotiate on any compensation at all. This was pretty interesting when I first heard this from the recruiter because, you know, I had been interviewing at many other companies and was never told up front that they were not willing to negotiate offers at all. Um, it, I've just never heard of uh, something like this happening. Um, so the recruiter ended up giving me all of the offer details up front, even before I started interviewing. So, you know, I knew what, you know, the whole total comp would actually be even before going through the process, um, which is good, you know, maybe for some people, you know, if they make a crazy amount of money already, it may not make sense to go through the interview process since, you know, they would tell you ahead of time. Um, but the issue with them giving a take it or leave it offer is that they don't take into consideration what you're currently making or what other offers you already have. Once I actually started getting competing offers, it became very clear from like a financial perspective that it wouldn't make sense to take the offer. And since I knew they weren't going to negotiate, I ended up rejecting once I had better offers in hand. And honestly, at the end of it all, I was just happy to get an offer from Coinbase at all. If I was at a different point in my career, I could have totally seen myself working there, but I it just didn't make sense where I am right now. Let me know if you guys want me to go over my Coinbase interview experience. I'm not sure if that would be useful, but you know, you can comment and let me know if that's something you guys would want. Uh, don't forget to check out my Discord channel. It's free. Uh, the group has actually grown a lot over the past couple months. So, you know, if you feel like you need some study partners, come join the Discord channel. The group is really growing fast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. That is all I have for you guys, and I will see you all next time.